I'm very thankful that the Flipper Zero came out. At the same time, I have to say that it has limited capabilities. Uh, it's it, it works good, it does some things very well, but it has a very limited frequency spectrum. It has yep. limited software. We're seeing the signals given off by all of the aircraft in the area, and it's refreshed every couple of seconds. You can watch these planes take off and land. I suppose, I mean, it varies country to country, right? But what, what's like the legality of what you're doing here? Have you ever noticed how some developers just seem to have that extra edge? Well, a lot of it comes down to one key skill, logic. And Brilliant Logic courses are here to give you that edge. In 18 hands-on lessons, Brilliant's first logic course takes you on a journey from the very basics of logic to advanced concepts that can set you apart in the tech world. You'll begin with practical order logic, learning to organize thoughts and processes in a way that's clear and efficient. It's the foundation of logical thinking. Then it's on to strategic order logic. Here's where you start to see things differently, learning techniques to strategize and solve problems more effectively. By practicing seeking the truth, you'll develop the ability to discern and extrapolate answers from the information you have. It's about sharpening your mind to cut through the complexity, a really important skill in today's world. By the end of the first course, you won't just be following logic, you'll be creating it. You'll stand out, not just as a developer, but as a problem solver, a critical thinker, and a real asset in any team. And as they say, there's more in the Logic 2 course and much, much more in Brilliant's catalog. So are you ready to upgrade your logical thinking? Join me on Brilliant and unlock your potential. Visit brilliant.org forward slash David Bomble to start your journey. The first 200 signups get a special offer. Let's master logic together. Everyone, it's David Bomble back with the amazing Occupy the Web. OTW, welcome. Thank you, David. It's always an honor to be back on the best IT and cybersecurity channel on YouTube. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you back. And I will say, just for everyone who hasn't seen our previous videos, I've linked them below. You should know who Occupy the Web is, but if you don't, amazing person to listen to in the cybersecurity space. Occupy the Web, you are part of the reason that my channel does well, gets so much feedback about people complaining that you don't come on often enough. So it's great to have you back. So just for everyone who hasn't seen our previous videos, Occupy the Web is the author of this book, Linux Basics for Hackers. We also have a video series, so I've linked that below if you want to follow along with our videos and the book. And Occupy the Web, I love the books that you write, Getting Started, Becoming a Master Hacker. And I'd say this is my favorite, Network Basics for Hackers, just because of my background. I always say this, I love the way you write because you take it from a hacker's mindset. But I got to ask you this question, right? These little devices, really, really famous, but... Some people would say flipper zeros are not actually that good. They're just toys and they dumb toys, some people would even say. What's your opinion of these? And hopefully you can, you know, take us on a journey about SDR. Well, my opinion about Flipper Zero, I have one. Of course, I got one early on when they first came out. And one of the things that I love about the Flipper Zero is that it has made millions of people aware of essentially software-defined radio, of yep. hacking radio signals. It has raised awareness. I've been doing SDR for hackers for a while, and most people had no idea what I was talking about yep. or what I was pursuing. And all of a sudden now, everybody, millions of people around the world are saying, wow, you can do that and with a simple you know, device. And so I'm very thankful that the Flipper Zero came out. At the same time, I have to say that it has limited capabilities. Uh, it's, it, it works good. It does some things very well, but it has a very limited frequency spectrum. It yep. has limited software. Um, so there's a lot more things that you can do with SDR, software-defined radios, which software-defined radios have been around for a while. They've, you know, they are basically a hardware device that simply converts the analog signals, the radio signals, into a digital signal. And it used to be not too long ago that to do these types of things, you would have to have multiple pieces of hardware and software to be able to pick up, okay, and transmit signals in the radio spectrum. Now you can get 
uh, a inexpensive device like the RTL SDR, which we'll be using here today, which is the least ex- one of the least expensive. It's about thirty to forty dollars, depending upon where you buy it from, and it's a good receiver. It's not a transceiver. It's not a transmitter. It just can receive signals. But for thirty-five dollars or so, it's it's a powerful little device. And then if you team it up with some really powerful software. There's a lot of things that you can do with it. And so what I'd like to do is to talk about some of the software that we Big can Christ, use huh? to be able to use these devices. Because in that, I, thought, I wouldn't say that the Clipper Zero is a toy. I might say it's a gimmick, you know, it's, but it's, I'm really thankful about how yep. much awareness it has raised about radio hacking. So this is, in my opinion, radio hacking is one of the leading edge fields of hacking and cybersecurity. And there's so many things that are run by radio signals, including your cell phone, your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, satellite signals, which we have a class coming up in later this year on satellite hacking. We also have an advanced SDR. We just ran our SDR class last year. We have an advanced SDR class coming up this summer. So these are, you know, these are the areas that I'm very excited and enthusiastic about. So hopefully I can convey that kind of enthusiasm to your listeners and they can see the the value in radio hacking because quite honestly, there's just everything, darn near everything, not everything, but darn near everything, yeah. right, has using some kind of radio signal. Exactly. And I think you and I did um, an automobile hacking yeah. video a while ago. Yeah. And one of the things we did there is that a lot of cars, modern cars now, have the, the key fob that will automatically unlock the door. And this is one of the things that you can do in radio hacking, among other things, <laughs> which... By the way, the uh, Flipper Zero, I think, just got banned yep. in Canada. I was going to ask yeah. you about that. Yeah, because it's like, it does, can this actually do what they think it can do? Because from what I have tested, it, I have to be careful what I say, but it doesn't sound like they actually understand what this can and can't do. <laughs> well, sometimes the person, the people who are making the rules and the laws don't necessarily understand the technical side yep. of it, but it's uh, it can unlock some of the older model yep. vehicles. And I think possibly the Canadian officials are making a connection between the car thefts and yep. the Flipper Zero that might not actually be there, right? Yep. There might just be other reasons that cars are being stolen. Yep. But in any case, it the Flipper Zero has been banned in Canada because of car theft. But all the other devices, which there are, you know, there's a, at least a dozen, 20 other devices that are out there, that can do the same thing. And those are not banned. So maybe that's what we should be looking at here. And we'll talk about that. And, you know, maybe, David, you and I should put together a series on great. software-defined radio. That'd what do you great. think about that? Yeah, that'd be great. So if everyone is watching, would you like OTW and I to do a series of videos? I think HackRF might be one that a lot of people will be interested in. So put your comments below. But what do you think about HackRF? And, but, I mean, I'm assuming there's a whole journey here that you're thinking about um, OTW. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about a whole journey starting from simple to advanced. You know, the simple being just setting up a receiver, uh, picking up signals from various uh, devices and vehicles and what have you, and then getting eventually into like hacking satellite signals. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. But but you're not going to hack satellite signals with an RTL SDR. So. There's at least, you know, there's there's about four or five very popular SDR devices. You know, probably the most popular is going to be the RTL SDR because it's so inexpensive. It's about $35. Then there's the Hack RF1 right, that runs about $350, so it's 10 times more expensive. There's also the Lime SDR, and that's a, a device that we recently used. We did a, a course on developing a, a femto cell and setting up your own yeah. cell phone network. So you can set up your own cell phone network, and you can intercept and and manipulate calls on the cell uh, system. But 
You're not going to do that once again with an RTL SDR. You're not going to do that with a Flipper Zero either, right? And there's the Blade RF, and there's a, a, a number of them. They, some of them get pretty pricey. I mean, you can spend thousands of dollars on these devices, but still, compared to what people used to spend on doing radio signal hacking, it's still inexpensive. So we're, we try to keep to the less expensive devices, you know, we try to keep it under, uh, we try to keep it under $1,000 of hardware outside of the computer but in, in our classes, just because you get more than yeah. that, you're really getting outside of a lot of people's abilities to, to buy it. Included in the whole hardware is an antenna as well. Yeah. So you should have a good antenna. If you buy the RTL SDR, you get a simple dipole antenna which is good. It does, you know, it'll pick up like things that, that are passing you by, or you'll pick up radio signals, almost any radio station, pick up the signals from the aircraft flying overhead. You can listen into the towers, communication to airplanes with it. You can pick up a lot of things, but when you start talking about being able to do some more sophisticated work, and when you, especially when you're talking about doing things like satellite hacking, you're going to need a specialized antenna for that. But still, these antennas, you know, they're going to run you from $50 to $500 in that range. So, but it's a, it's amazing what you can do if you're willing to make the investment in the time and the skills and a little bit of hardware. And, you know, the what's happening right now is that the whole world is beginning to see that this this area of hacking is largely unsecured. And that's what, you know, it's probably part of what Canada is doing. They go, oh my gosh, you know, these cars are being stolen because they, they're not secure against these type of radio attacks. I doubt that there's that many cars being stolen in Canada with a flipper zero, but to, to each their own, right? Um, but if you got, if you have sophisticated hardware and software, you can, you can steal these cars and, uh, and so what I'd like to do is kind of talk about some of the software that's available to you. I mean, there's one of the things that, you know, as this field develops, we're getting more and more software. And each one of them has kind of a specific purpose. But recently, in the last couple of years, there's been a, an operating system that has come out that's specifically for SDR hacking. And it's called Dragon OS. And it's amazing. It has hundreds, hundreds, no, hundreds, yeah, hundreds of tools for SDR hacking. And I'd like to kind of introduce your viewers to it today and do a, do a simple, a simple attack, a simple interception. Let's call it that. Resin, call it attack. We're going to intercept some signals and, uh, and show you kind of the power of some of these tools. It's interesting in London. Land Rovers or people owners of Land Rovers are being refused insurance because of how many have been stolen. <laughs> really? It, yeah, it's um, something okay. about one of the CEO, one of the CEO or some high ranking person within a uh, Land Rover said, um, This is not true. It's not the most stolen car in the UK. But um, from, you know, stuff that you've seen out there, like people complaining, can't get insurance because it's stolen so often. And, um, it's a, it's a problem, right? Um, so I'm glad that you're going to do what you often do. And just for everyone watching, we've done a whole bunch of videos with Mr. Robot or about Mr. Robot and like, you know, truth versus fiction. And OTW, it's great to have you here talking about, you know, what's actually real and what's just hype or fantasy or, you know, the movies. And the same, you know, for cars. Most of the vehicles since 2014 have made it more difficult to use a Flipper Zero or radio hacking doesn't it, it still can be done it's just more difficult right that's always the case yeah. in information security you you somebody puts in some type of measure a countermeasure against the hack doesn't mean you can't still hack it just means you got to work a little harder which goes to what i've been saying on your show many times is that hacking is not 30 seconds or less like a tiktok video yeah. real hacking some sometimes can take years like yep. something like Stuxnet or 
some of the others where very advanced individuals spend years developing the hack. If the target is insecure, like somebody basically did not do anything to secure the devices, to secure the particular resource, then yeah, you might be able to take it down to 30 seconds or less. But if you're talking about a very secure environment, you might have to spend years of research to be able to do it. And that's part of what we try to teach at Hackers Rise. We're not trying to teach the gimmicks yep. that get, get all the views on TikTok because you know, that's not really, that's not real. Right? What's real in, at least in a penetration testing, intelligence, cyber war environment is some of those hacks will take years to actually bear fruit. So we try to, we try to raise the level and try to show people, you know, give them the background knowledge to be able to do that type of hacking. But in any case, what we, what we have here today is we have a, a operating system called Dragon OS and this is Dragon OS and it's been designed just for radio hacking. And the beauty of it is that most of the radio hacking tools have a lot of dependencies. They have libraries and what have you that need to be installed to be able to function properly. And this can take, especially somebody who's new to Linux or new to radio hacking, sometimes lots of time to be able to install all the dependencies and get it all set up. Whereas this operating system has not only the tools, but there are and all the dependencies set up. So you're ready to roll when you download it. It's so free, right? You can fu- and it's free, of course. Yes, I. It's free. So here's here's the the, the source. Okay, it's on SourceForge. Some executor, executor, some executor is the developer of it, and uh, he's done a really good job. Right? And it works with a number of different devices: RTL SDR, Hack RF One, Lime SDR, Blade RF, and many others. In our classes, we use RTL SDR, the Hack RF1, and Lime SDR. Lime being the priciest and maybe the most powerful of these, and it runs about $500. Okay. Whereas the RTL SDR costs about, let's say, $35. Hack RF1 is, a, is an excellent device for somebody getting started, about $350. The only drawback to the Hack RF1 is a couple of things. One, is that it has a has a wide spectrum of radio signals that it can send and receive at. So that's a good thing. But it's it, it's not full duplex. It's half duplex, yep. which means that it can either send or receive, but not both at the same time. And you can see where that might have some yep. issues where you know, if you're trying, say, for instance, to replicate a cellular phone system, <laughs> you've got to both be able to send <laughs> and receive at the same time, right? Yep. Yep. Otherwise, otherwise, it's going to be, it's going to not work smoothly. The Blade RF will work both full duplex and it's very fast. Hack RF has another limitation in that it's a USB 2 and not USB 3. So it makes it a slow connection to your system. So here's where you can get it at. Um, I would recommend that you download it. It's, uh, I don't know, three gigs or something like that of operating system. It might be more, uh, but it's pretty big. And you know, you can create a virtual machine of it or you can put it on barrier metal and get started in radio hacking. So with that having been said, let's take a look at this operating system. And it's actually Lubuntu, okay? So for those people who are familiar with Ubuntu, it's going to look and feel similar, but here's the menu system down here. And you can see it has a lot of really good pieces of software built into it. All right. So here's the accessories. Here's the educational. Here's the graphics, some good stuff. Then we have ham radio and we've got all a bunch of ham radio tools here, but most of the tools, all right, let me just go to internet. All right. Office. So LibreOffice is all installed. Here's the other. So in under other, we've got a lot of powerful tools. All right. So GSM evil for the uh, GSM uh, networks. Let me see if I can get all of this on the screen. Uh, Let's see. We have Osmo network in a box right here. 
Yate. Okay, these are all cell. They're, they're cell network applications. They're tools for hacking or creating your own cellular network. Right? This is create your own cellular network. Yate creates your own cellular network. Um, these are things that we've done in our class. Here's an IMSI catcher right, for catching the IMSIs as they come off the cell towers and a number of other things. Um, so lots of interesting tools, and there's some system tools here. All of the tools, you can see them in, by going to user, okay, CD, user, source. And all the tools should be there as we go there. Look at them. Lots and lots of tools. Including GNU Radio, okay. Uh, we have... Oh, what else do we have here that might be interesting? GR satellites here. There's a GSM Evil we were talking about that allows you to hack um, GSM signals. Here's Dump 1090, which is what we're going to use today. We're going to use Dump 1090 as a quick display of what we can do with the, without a whole lot of skill and uh, with just a RTL SDR and the Dragon OS. And so you get an idea of what's out there. There's lots of things out there. There is uh, some LTE, here it is, LTE cell scanner, okay, for scanning cell towers, LTE um, cell towers. We don't have a, a 5G scanner yet that I'm aware of. If anybody knows of one, let me know, but I'm not aware of one yet. So we can scan for GSM, we can scan for LTE, fifth generation 5G, uh, I don't see it yet. In any case, if you're going to scan for those kinds of, of 5G, 5G, some of the 5G is operating at as high a frequency as 5 gigahertz. So many of these devices won't operate at that high a frequency. Like, for instance, the Flipper Zero won't even operate at 1 gigahertz. It's all sub 1 gigahertz. Uh, something like HackRF, I think, goes up to 1.6 gigahertz. The Blade RF will go up to about three and a half gigahertz. So none of these devices are going to operate at these very high frequencies. Now, that having been said, we're not seeing much of the cell signals operating at those high frequencies. Right now, most of the 5G is operating at lower frequencies, similar to LTE. But the whole plan to get the speeds up that they've promised us, they're going to have to move up to the 5G, 5 gigahertz. Uh, area. So for right now, we don't have something to really hack or to intercept those signals, but we probably will very, very soon. That having been said, all right, what I have here is I've got an RTL SDR. So the least expensive, or one of the least expensive, I guess there actually are some that are less expensive. And I'm going to go ahead and just go um, LSUSB, right? And this is what will show me what is connected to my system. And you can see it's not connected. Oh, okay. Yep. So I've got to do something. <laughs> so let's go up here and connect it. And let's go removable devices. And you can see it right here. Here's the Realtek RTL SDR and connect it. All right. So if on a virtual machine, I've got to go through this process of connecting it. All right. I should point out too that doing SDR through a virtual machine has some limitations as we found uh, sometimes that USB connection between the physical machine and the, and the virtual machine can be problematic. So just if you're new in this field and you're starting out and you're having problems, it might be your USB, right? So let's go ahead and try LSUSB again. And now we see it, Realtek Semiconductor RTL. Okay, that's it right there. So now we're connected. And what we can do with this now is to go ahead and... Well, let's introduce a subject here. Airplanes and ships and other vehicles all send out a signal that gives their location, okay, and, uh, and speed and uh, altitude in the case of airplanes, certainly not in ships. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, maybe, they, maybe on some ships you would have to give them. Uh, <laughs> and so this signal, can be intercepted by your simple, inexpensive RTL SDR. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, there's a, a tool here. I showed it to you up above. It's called Dump 1090 because it's called Dump 1090 because 1090 is a frequency 
that these signals come. And this is all the airplanes. We're going to look at just airplanes today. You know, all the aircraft have to send out this signal that gives the cell towers and others their position and speed and altitude. Of course, you can also pick up their radio communications too, but that's a different tool. So to go ahead and run this, all right, we go dot, dot forward slash, okay, dump. 1090. And it says, it's a directory, so I have to go there first. All right, so I'm going to think it's a dump. 1090, like that. There we go. Let's take a look inside that directory. And there's my executable binary right there. All right, and it's already set to execute. So I can go ahead then and just go dump. 1090. And it goes and starts... What it's doing is it's simply picking up the uh, the signals from all the aircraft in the area, all right? And this is not really very useful information. Well, it's useful, but it's not in a form that's easy yeah. to, to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change some switches on it, okay? And uh, we'll show you how you can actually use this. Okay. That more, I'm going to stop it with a control C. All right. So I should point out that this, these types of signals, okay, are sent out on by you know, almost every vehicle that's out there in our modern world. Right? It's a way for you know regulators and the, the the people who are in charge of making sure they don't crash into each other yeah. <laughs> to 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 track their location and their information. So let's go ahead and and try a different switch. Let's try this. Take a look at the help screen first before we go any further. Go dump 1090-H. All right, here we go. There's a lot of stuff here, okay? So yeah, we've, got a device, long, we've got a long series to, to cover, right? Go on. Well, Sorry. yeah, but we just, like anything, there's lots of options, yeah. right? But in general, you can, you can reduce these tools yeah. to just a few switches to get it to do what you want. All right, lots of lots of options here. So what we want to do is to maybe go ahead and say, dump 1090, and then go interactive. See, that was one of the options up above, All right? Let's go interactive right there. Interactive mode, refreshing data on screen, okay? So let's go ahead and do this, and here we go. Whoa, nice. look at all those, look at all those planes. So you can see here, this is, this is hex, okay? The mode, the squawk, the flight, the flight number, the altitude, the speed, the heading, the latitude, the longitude, and more, all right? So we're seeing the signals given off by all of the aircraft in the area, and it's refreshed every couple of seconds. So you can watch these planes take off and land, okay? Um, I should point out that I've got a good antenna on this thing, so I'm I was picking say, up. Yeah, I, I've got, I've got, I'm picking up a lot more flights than you might at home. I've got a, a parabolic antenna, so if you're not familiar, it's kind of like those dishes that you've seen. You've seen kind of like a um, a TV dish similar to that, same shape, right? And it picks up the signals from a much larger distance. It costs, I think I paid like under $200 for it. And if you're, you know, if I was doing this with a regular dipole antenna, I'd see a, a fraction of these yeah. flights. But this is picking up all the information so that I can see all of the flights in, in the area, quite for some miles, actually. So Occupy the Web, a question a lot of people might have is, you know, I don't want to go to jail. I just want to learn. And I want to learn how to protect. <laughs> yeah. So what's the, I suppose, I mean, it varies country to country, right? But what, what's like the legality of what you're doing here? Well, the legality of what I'm doing here is it's, there's no problem with it. I don't want to go to jail either, uh, yeah. by the way. <laughs> but this is simply, you know, this is, would be similar to just picking up a, a local radio station. So yeah. these signals are given off by the aircraft. And it's, it's out there, it's unencrypted, it's anybody can see it. 
there's nothing, there's no laws against picking up this information and reading it. Now, if you were to do something to manipulate it, okay, or to block it, or in, in sending out your own signal, okay, yeah. now that's what you're starting to get into some legal issues. Just reading it, this is similar to just like I said, just uh, turning on your radio and picking up the radio signal. You're not manipulating it. In many countries, sending a signal at certain frequencies or is illegal, yeah. right? But here, all we're doing is we're listening in. We're just picking up this de this information, decoding and displaying it on the screen for us. I will say this for everyone watching: this is not legal advice. This you have to look at your own country's rules and decide for yourself. But I think Occupy exactly. the Web the the great thing about what you're doing here, and the great thing, like you said, about the little flipper zeros, right, is it raises awareness because we have all this stuff around us and people aren't aware how vulnerable some of this stuff is. And I think the flipper zero is forcing manufacturers and governments to take action and improve the security on stuff because it's it's not the good people that are causing the trouble. The bad, A lot of bad people know about this stuff already anyway. I agree with you 100%. So the laws are going to vary by country. So make sure that you check your laws. But I think in the case here of just receiving, I don't think anybody yeah. has any laws against that. But when you start manipulating the yeah. signals or blocking the signals or transmitting signals, and yeah. the RTLSDR cannot transmit, it can only receive. So if you're doing the RTLSDR, you're not probably going to get into any legal issues because you're not going ahead and sending any signals. Once you start sending signals, yeah. then you can possibly get yourself into some legal jeopardy. Um, yes, the this type of work has been done by military intelligence and intelligence, national security agencies around the world for decades. The only thing that's different is that now the average user with a laptop and a few hundred dollars can do something very similar. So, yes, the Flipper Zero has raised the awareness yeah. that, hey, we need to do something about the security of radio signals. And one of the things that's happened in a very recent past is that the hacking of these satellites has started to take place. As a matter of fact, this is kind of in the news right now between nation states. Yeah. And they have discovered... Surprise, surprise, that there's no security on the satellites, <laughs> right? So, so, and we're so dependent. You know, you might think, well, you know, that's all, you know, the national government and military satellites. Well, you know, almost all of us are using signals transmitted by those satellites, whether it be Starlink, of course, but also, you know, your your cell communications. Yep, GPS. Um, your, your, your GPS. You know, these things are all going through satellites, and if somebody were to hack them, we could all lose that capability. And we're all so dependent upon it. One of the things that we do in our SDR class is I show people how you can actually spoof your GPS signal so that you appear to be someplace else than you actually are. Now, as far as I know, there's no, there's no law against that, but you can simply send out a GPS signal up to the satellite and, and send inaccurate information. So in the class, we spoofed that I was actually sitting in the Kremlin. <laughs> and so my GPS signal said I was in the Kremlin sitting next to Putin. And uh, so obviously I'm not, uh, but that's the kind of thing that you can do. And what, you know, we'll, what we'll do is, you know, start off slow here that's and great. let people get familiar with the SDR, go out and buy a little bit of hardware. If you can only afford the RTL SDR, we'll do a few cool hacks with the RTL SDR, and then we'll kind of advance into the hack RF and some of the other devices that have more sophisticated capabilities. So Occupy the Web, you're telling me offline, and I can't remember the details, so just correct me if I'm wrong, but people from perhaps three-letter agencies or some people came to your courses because they were trying to find out what people like you can actually do against satellites, right? That's that's satellites and other radio communication. So yes, we have students from around the world, from national governments and law enforcement. So it's not just penetration testers. We have a lot of people yeah. now who come from agencies that are are have been given the task of securing national assets 
And we have law enforcement from the U.S. and Canada and Belgium and Ukraine and Germany. I think Finland as well. Um, and so they are coming to our courses so they can learn what is possible. Yeah. And so by learning what's possible, they can better secure those resources. I think that's a really important thing to say because sometimes we get flack, right, on YouTube about like, how you, how come you're teaching people this stuff? But the thing is, it's awareness, right? If you don't have red teamers or hackers, at the time of this recording, I mean, there's big development in AI where you can generate videos. And it was interesting that people that have access to that are red teamers. You know, if you don't give the red teamers or the good guys who are trying to like test your security, you know, the bad guys are going to get access anyway. Exactly. So part of, you know, a red teamer right, is to test the security of the system, the network, the resources, so that they can find the holes and vulnerabilities yep. before the bad guys do. If you don't do that, then the bad guys are going to get in. Right? I mean, the bad guys get in no matter what, you know, sometimes, but they get in a lot more if there wasn't somebody testing the security first and finding the vulnerabilities and then patching those vulnerabilities. That's what we do is that we go ahead and we try to find it, inform management. Here's the problem. Somebody is going to, to get in this way. You need to do something. Easy you need to patch it or you need to have some kind of compensating control to keep the bad guys from getting in. So, yes, that's what we're doing here. We're not teaching people to steal your life savings out of your bank account. Occupy the Web, I really want to thank you for sharing. It's fantastic to have someone like you, you know, sharing this information with all of us, especially for the next generation, you know, enabling people to learn about this stuff, protect companies, protect their governments or whatever they're involved in or wherever they're involved. But, you know, also get jobs. Um, this stuff is out there. It's great that you're teaching and not keeping the knowledge to yourself. So thanks so much for sharing. You're welcome. I always enjoy your welcoming me on your show and having me here to discuss these things. I, I enjoy you know, sharing this with the public. And what I'd like to do is continue, as I said, this process of starting off simple and getting people into SDR. And we'll, we'll continue this process of going through simple to more complex SDR hacks. And this is state-of-the-art folks so you know if you want to make a career or you're already in the field and you want to advance your career this is something yeah. that you should be considering to learn how to do because it's going to separate you from all the other people you know who who don't understand what this field is about and how important it is for information security okay by the way there's a lot of stuff that you and i talk about offline that I wish we could put on YouTube. But just for everyone watching, I have to hold Occupy the Web back sometimes because he has these fantastic ideas. And I say, look, I don't want my channel striked or get a channel strike against my channel um, or my channel just removed, right? So Occupy the Web, where can people go um, to learn a lot more? Like, can they attend your classes, stuff like that? You know, just tell us where people can go. Well, we have a class in our subscriber pro program, which is the advanced classes where we do SDR hacking. And then we have a advanced SDR hacking class coming up in, uh, I think it's in June or July. And then we have a satellite hacking class coming up in the fall, September, I believe. Advanced SDR is June 11th through 13th. We've done a couple of the SDR hacking classes. We're on like the third version of it. This will be the first time we've done the advanced SDR, June 11th through the 13th. And we have satellite hacking on September 10th through 12th. And as we are sitting here right now, there is a major issue about satellite hacking going yeah. on between national governments right now. And it's because people have finally realized that these satellites, their communication is not secure. And not only can you intercept the signals, and but you can also send signals up to these satellites that can manipulate them and control them. So just for everyone watching, I've put a link below. And Occupy the Web, I'm going to let you say this because you've been very kind to share a discount for people that use my link below, right? We do. We, uh, we're Everybody who's watching us here can use the discount code BOMBAL, B-O-M-B-A-L, David's last name. 
and get 20% off on anything at Hackers or Eyes. I really appreciate you doing that. And for everyone watching, please put your comments below, stuff that you want to see, that you you know really want us to cover. Occupy the Web's got a whole bunch of content, a huge amount of knowledge. So let us know the kinds of stuff that you want to see. OTW, as always, thanks so much. Thanks, Dave. It's always good being here.